Hello guys, welcome back to the bench. And today we're going to be going over one of my favorite, if not my favorite primers. Um, I know it's my favorite acrylic primer, but it might be my favorite primer over all of them. I haven't tested everything yet, so I can't call it my favorite. Is uh, Stylo Res. And these are made by Badger. Yes, the same Badger. That makes one of my favorite airbrushes. And um, these are a wonderful, super durable and they adhere to plastic really good much better than almost any other uh, acrylic primer i've tested and um these are these come in a uh, what size is this two two ounce yep these are two ounce bottles um they're under 10 bucks they're worth it let me tell you right now these things are worth it and uh they come in a ton of colors i don't think i have all of them there's i think there's a uh a beige and maybe another brick color or something but uh, I ordered everything I could get and um, I'll show you what I got here for colors this is white black gray those are your three standards right there now we're gonna go into some metallics copper how's that for unique a copper colored primer bronze metal very good for candy colors. Uh, olive green, great for military tanks and whatnot. Red brown, again, great for military and tanks. Now we got some brighter colors here. Pale mustard, a yellowish. Dull pink, this is basically their red. I thought they had a red, but this is what they had. And uh, oceanic, oceanic. Oceanic blue. It's a light blue, really nice. And this bigger bottle, gloss black. Black gloss, it says here. Oh, it's worn off a little bit. This is a shiny black and um, really good results. Now, it claims to not need thinning. And you can do it without thinning, straight from the bottle. Um, but you're going to need a 0.5, they, re they recommend a 0.5 millimeter or larger. This is uh, Badger's silver end. This is a 0.7. And their uh, blue end is their 0.5. So this is the smallest they recommend. If you're going to go smaller, you have to thin them. Period. Um, and this also is my uh, Procon 290. This is also a 0.5. So I would use any of these for sure. And now, let's get this out of the way. Personally, I thin them a little bit. I thin them a little bit. And I mean a little, a few drops. It helps a lot. It stops with the tip dry. You're going to get some tip dry. And um, it helps with that quite a bit. But I think it flows a little better. It seems to set a little better. That's me. I've done it both ways. Both look great. They both. I mean, they, they both look great. You don't have to thin them. You're going to have to go high air pressure, probably 30 PSI. Minimum of a 5 needle, 0.5 needle, for sure. Uh, for thinning them, you can use Flow Improver, Airbrush Thinner, uh, Universal Acrylic Thinner from Testers. This is Airbrush Flow Improver. I got this brand, Impreza. Yeah, Impreza. I got this on uh, uh, Amazon. I'll put a link below. I think the Flow Improver is sold out. So if you're going to use a Flow Improver, you can still use Vallejo. But... Uh, this acrylic thinner will work fine. Ultimate airbrush thinner, which works on everything. Um, this is AK's acrylic thinner. This is MIG's acrylic thinner. And you can use my homemade acrylic thinner that uh, I showed in my video previous, uh, you know, last year. How to make your own. That works fine too. Any of those. And I believe I have one from uh, Badger. I also have a Badger thinner. Uh, it's back there somewhere. It, it's all fine. It all works good. You're only going to use a few drops. Um, I recommend these over water. I think the water breaks it down a little bit. These uh, these help with the breaking. It doesn't break down the uh, the pigments and the grip at all. It helps quite a bit by uh, using one of these. And what we're going to spray these on. Let's get these out of the way again. I'll show you what I mean by a few drops too. That's for sure. you got to... You only need a couple of drops. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to spray them on. 
some white plastic. This is an aircraft kit. I masked it off, so we're going to spray one color here, one color here, so we can, you know, save a little bit there. Same thing. I got the tops and bottoms of both of those wings. I got this airplane kit that's uh, got a lot of detail in it. This is um, black, so we're going to put some lighter colors over that. Here's a little cockpit detail. You can see uh, the rivets and whatnot. We'll see what that does. And, of course, I'm going to do some Gumpla stuff here. This is from a wing kit. A master grade wing. I got a bunch of these. See that? We're going to spray over them. I got this shield. That's that Gundam color, that greenish white. And a dark navy blue piece here. It looks like a skirt. And this is uh, polycaps. I had a request to try it over polycaps. They heard it's pretty flexible. So we're going to try it over polycaps. We'll spray this whole piece and then we'll bend it at the end and see how it goes. All right, you can sand it. If you're gonna sand it, let it dry a little longer. Um, half hour after you spray this, you can start spraying over it, and anything goes over it. Any paint will go over it perfectly. Uh, if you're gonna sand it, I'd wait. I'd wait a day to get it really thickened and hard, and then you can sand it down. I'll do some sanding here. We'll show you, and I'll do some masking tape uh, poles to show you how strong it is. And um, another thing I want to tell you is in the back here. Check this out. Now, I don't think they have all the colors, but they do have these basics. This is uh, MIG's one-shot primer, and I'm showing you this because it's this. It's the white, it's the black, and it's the gray right there. It's the same brand. Uh, Badger makes it for them. It's even in the same bottle. You can tell, obviously, it's in the same bottle. So it's the same product. If, if you want to get just the basic colors, I'm not sure how many colors MIG makes, but I know you can get these three for sure. And it's MIG One Shot Primer. It's the same paint. It's in the, the same primer in the same bottle. It just says MIG One Shot on it instead of Stano Res. I believe Stano Res, if folklore tells me I'm right, was the name of the band, the guy who founded Badger Airbrushes in, uh, in Illinois. I don't think it was Chicago, but I think it was in Illinois. And it was uh, a metal band. It might have been a metal band. Yeah, I'm not sure, but this is the name they came up with, Stano Res, and I think that's the name. That's why it's so wacky here. It's just it's an old metal band, I believe. That's where it came from. I should ask the company before I uh, let that out there, but maybe somebody knows that you can write below in the comment section if that's indeed what that is. Um, all right, so for the test, we're going to go... Uh, I'm going to go between 25 and 30 PSI um, when I'm not using uh, a Patriot. So if I'm going to use this, I'm going to go with uh, a higher PSI. If I'm going to shoot through one of the Patriots, it's going to be 20 or, or less because this is a very efficient, high-flow needle setup. It comes right through. You don't need a lot of air pressure, particularly if you're going to thin it a little bit. And um, I'm going to show you how much I mean by a little we're going to thin it. So let me get this out of the way. That's good enough. All right. You got a cup here. And for cleaning the airbrush, Ultimate Airbrush Cleaner, Vallejo, Vallejo uh, Airbrush Cleaner, this is CreateX, Wicked Colors, CreateX brand, Airbrush Cleaner, you got this at Hobby Lobby, nice big bottle, it's pretty cheap, this is Media, this is, uh, I think this is Iwata's, yeah, Iwata brand, this is Media, This is. I also got this at uh, Hobby Lobby. And that was like 11, 12 bucks. Really worth it. You get a lot out of it. Plus, you can use my homemade airbrush cleaner. This is uh, the one I shot the video on, on how to make your own homemade thinner. All right, let's pull this out. There we go. So we can fit everybody in there. So any of those will clean it. Plus, uh, you're gonna use. I'm going to use my old trick of uh, hot water. I'm reaching behind me, guys. I brewed some hot water in uh, my old... Ozark Care, uh, my Yeti cup. Keeps it warm for a long time. I keep a cover on it. This has been here for a while and it's still steaming. So, uh, keep a cover on that. I like to blast hot water through it. And if you're going to do a lot, you're going to have to have a brush on hand. I'm not spraying a lot because I'm doing, you know, little pieces. But you're going to keep this. Keep the hot water next to you. And just dip it and just run it across the front of your needle. You'll get your tip dry right off there because this is a really thick paint in the air dries it really quickly on the tip so you're going to want to brush the tip with uh, some hot water as you're uh, as you're spraying it 
It's very important to remember that. And once you're done, you're going to clean it out right away. Once you're done spraying, get in here, flush it out with the hot water first, get it through quick, and then hit one of these, backwash it, and move on to the next color. That's what I'm going to do. If you don't, if you're only going to do one color, you guys, more than likely, we'll do one color. I'm going to do them all because we're going to show you what they look like. Um, you're just going to want to clean it out right away. Uh, the second you're done spraying, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, the, the white is a much chalkier, denser. It's not as good as the rest. I'm a little disappointed in the white. So for that, um, you got to do the white. You got to clean it out quickly. The white is the one you really got to pay attention to. And you're probably going to want to go uh, thinning this slightly and high air pressure. Everything else is as I said. And uh, what I did for mixing was I did these these hematite beads that I got at Hobby Lobby. These are non-rusting. I bought a strand of a necklace and I cut it and just emptied it in here. You're just going to open them up. They all come pre-sealed. I opened them all up. You're going to take a hematite bead. Hold on, guys. My fat fingers can't grab this thing. You just drop one in, and that's it. All right, now it's probably going to be settled when you first get them. You want to get the bottom mixed up a bit, and then, hold on, guys. I don't want to hit the camera here, as I always seem to do. And then we're going to just mix it up good. And you can probably hear the... You can hear the, um, the hematite bead that I just put in there, really doing a good job mixing this up. So you're going to do both sides, go on an angle, you're probably ready to go. You can see it's really mixed up nice there, the uh, copper, look at that. So let's get this out, all right, all right, it's on the stand, that's why it's shaking the camera. All right guys, that's it, let me uh, mix them up, I'm going to show you the mixing ratio, and it's not a lot, and uh, I'm also going to show you um, how much I mixed. I, I thin the, the gloss black for sure. Um, that's a must. But the others you don't have to thin. If you're going to go with a big needle, I'm going to show you not thinned also. But I want to show you uh, right now quickly how we're going to thin it. Now I shook all these off camera just now, so these are all pretty shaken up. So let's go ahead and pour some in. There you go. Really nice, clean jar tops. Look at that. And there it is. And this will spray perfect through either of the Patriots or the uh, 0.5 Procon 290. But I do like to thin it a dash, a little bit. And like I said, you can use any thinner. This is the acrylic thinner I have from uh, Amazon. Can you see how many drops I'm putting? What is that? Three, four, five. All right. Let me grab a stick. And that's it. That a little bit is what I like to thin it out. All right. If you want to do a little bit of flow improver, which I do like, two drops of that is good. Mix it up good. You are ready to go. Now the rule of thumb is uh, you want it to drip off. You know, my stick isn't holding a lot. But see the drops? When you're doing regular paint too, you want to just have little drips like rain coming down, not like a thick drop. And that's, uh, that's how you're going to use your judgment call on that. All right? So let's head over. Now this one's mixed. We'll do this one first, I guess, the gray. And uh, I'll show you how good this stuff works. We'll put up a couple pieces here, and uh, we'll meet you at the booth. All right, guys, with a different mount here. I'm trying to get it so you guys can see uh, what I'm painting here a little better uh, than the previous video. All right, here we go. This is the gray. And you can load it up. Believe it or not, it looks all rough and tumble. Is that the term? And then uh, it levels itself unbelievable. I mean, it's all rough looking. Look at that. I'll show you in the end how nice this stuff ends up leveling out.
everyone's just loading it up, you know? That's good. This dark blue piece. And this stuff levels really nice. You're going on. Um, you're gonna be shocked because it looks. When I first got it, I says. This stuff ain't that great. It, it goes on like uh, crayons, uh, whatever the term is I was using. And uh, it, it ends up looking really good. All right. Now, you let it sit. It'll dry itself in 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to put it in my dehydrator for about five minutes. And um, I'm going to do that with everything so it'll be ready quicker uh, for the end of the test. Uh, let me go wash this out. I'll put in another color. The next color I'll do, maybe black, I'll, do, uh, I'll show you it from the bottle, not thinned, so I'll show you how it goes through not thinned. All right guys, let me show you black straight out of the jar, the bottle, whatever we call it. Oop, hold on. I thought the cap was loose, so I wanna make sure it wasn't gonna spill all over the place. All right, look at that, I'm gonna go straight from the jar, the cup, the bottle, right in. All right, here we go. Over black, this is the 0.7. This is where uh, having uh, an airbrush just for primer comes in handy. If you get one with a 0.5 or larger, this is a 0.7, then uh, this will do everything you need it to do as far as primers go. And clears, I like to put clears on with a larger needle too. Look how nice that cleared, it sprayed perfectly, not thinned. I think I have to go over here. Nope. That's it. I'm out. I blew it right through. Okay. Now, it's shiny now. It's going to dry dull. And um, I'll put this in the dehydrator now. I'll clean this out quick. I'll move on to the next color. All right, guys. Next up, we're going to do the white. Uh, white, I recommend not thinning. Um, we really don't have to thin all of them. You saw how good the black went down. Uh, some colors I got it written down I forgot which uh, some give you a little bit of trouble that's why I put a couple extra drops or some flow improver for the most part if you have a large needle you don't have to thin it but uh, I really recommend not thinning the white we're gonna go straight from the bottle into the airbrush orange peel and uh, you guys are gonna be shocked when you see it when it's done it looks different in there you can see it's really chalky it's the only one that acts a little different but it still gets the job done let me go put this into the dehydrator flush this out and we'll move on to some of the colors all right guys next up we're gonna go with some copper Our accent here in New England copper that's uh, copper. We're gonna go. Uh, we'll go straight in with this one. Make sure it's shaking up pretty good. Here we go.
Oh, this would be great for uh, a candy base. Trying to get in all the spots here. First time with this color right now with you guys. So this is a first for me. Really nice color. It's, uh, that's it, it's on there. Let's, uh, let's try it overall on a spoon. test that for sanding or something all right guys let me clean this out put this in the dehydrator and we'll move on to the next color all right guys that's off drying here is just straight up metal my favorite music uh just shook it up a quick shake on the old uh mixer i have and let's gonna pour it straight in and the metal one is uh, on the thin side as far as this brand goes. Can you see it in there? That's pretty thin. My buddy uses this as a base, as the actual color of the aircraft that he was building. He didn't actually need another color. covered really nice let's uh let's put over this black spoon so we can kind of see it a little better there you go covers nice and fast let's uh Let's hit another spoon so we can test some for sanding. It's like I'm painting a uh, silver here, not even painting a, a primer. It's really, uh, really unique. Yeah, that's covered good. I was gonna go over it again, but I think we're good. Like I said, with this stuff, you can go on heavy. You'll be surprised how well it dries. All right, guys, let me clean this out. I'll put in, uh, put this in the dehydrator. I'll come back with another color. All right, guys, on to the next. We got bronze. I just shook it up. Once again, I'm gonna go straight into the airbrush. This should be good. I'm gonna guess that this is gonna look kind of similar to uh, the copper, but we'll see. It's a bit darker already. This would be a good primer for uh, a car. If you're painting a car gold or some kind of metallic like this. Oh yeah, it's much darker than the uh, copper. Probably going to need a little bit more uh, in the airbrush. So I'm going to put this one on heavy. Yeah, it's getting it done. Put some on my fingers. That's a rarity. I'm usually Mr. Neat. Quite a bit darker, that's for sure. If you see any dull spots, it actually ends up drying really even. But uh, 
I'll go put this in the dryer. We'll move on to the next color. All right, guys, next up is olive green. A great one for uh, military and tanks. I'm gonna go ahead and put this straight in again. Do the other side of this wing. Some residual of the copper here on one side. That's okay. I think this one could have used some thinning. That's why I like to thin some of them. I know certain colors, I think, need a bit of thinning. This is one of them. You're still going to get it done, you know. Yeah, it went on all right, though. All right, let me put this in the uh, dehydrator. Move on to the next color. All right, guys, because that last one, the uh, that olive green was a little heavy, even with a .7 needle, I told you, um, it still worked, but... To help it out a little bit, I thinned it with four drops of uh, Vallejo, Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. Um, so, watch the difference. Can you see it? It's, it's like, there's no struggle. And it's literally, I think I did four drops. Another great... Uh, Primer for military use. I'm trying to switch my hands here. There we go. I mean, with four drops, look at the difference. It just it just effortlessly came right out, lays itself down, perfect. It's still going to dry quick. Um, absolutely beautiful. So uh, I might add a few drops with the rest of the colors because the rest of the colors are opaques. Believe it or not, the metallics seem to be the ones that uh, are really much more thinner than the opaques. But uh, I definitely have to thin, personally, the gloss. I wasn't getting a high shine with the gloss black. I'll show you that in a minute. But anyway, let's move on to the uh, rest of the colors. Okay guys, next up is the dull pink. I thinned it again a little bit, just four drops. And on this, we're gonna do a part of the wing. And let's try it on some polycaps. as I can. It's an awkward piece here. But we just want to see if it flexes, you know, if it can hold up to that type of plastic. All right, we'll put that aside. All right, let's see what this looks like on this wing. We'll blow it off first. Goes on really nice. Bismol pink there, I think. I think I got a name for one of my Mecha Empire colors. That's it. All right, we'll let that dry. I'll put that in with the uh, poly caps. We'll move on. We're getting towards the end here. Move on to the next color. All right, now let's move on to the next color. Reach for the bottle. Oceanic blue. You can tell how further in the uh, test we've gotten as the brand new filter pad is now colored. 
All right, for this we're going to do the uh, gumpla piece. Let's blow it off. That's just air. All right, here we go. That's it. That is covered. Really nice. Went on nice too. I thinned this with a couple of drops. But it looked thin coming out. You probably didn't have to thin this one. You play it by ear, as uh, so a uh, musician would say. Let me go put this in the dryer. I'll be back. One color left, and then we're going to do the glossy black. So, I'll be right back. All right, guys, next up, last of the colors. Pale mustard. It really is, too. We'll put this on a gumpla piece. And here we go. Oh, it lays down really nice. Look at that. That is it. Let me, uh, let's go ahead and spray a spoon here. Got a bunch still in the cup. Here we go. Let's, uh, let's try it over black and see how good, uh, it covers for a yellow. covered all right that's it for the colors let's uh, move on to the shiny glossy black and then we'll wrap this up all right guys the final one in the test will be the gloss black here it is I thinned it with a few drops a thinner for sure I I, uh, I know for a fact I like this one thinned not a lot but just a little bit it was coming out not shiny um, when I was doing it uh, straight out of the bottle. I'm going to try and put it on evenly so it, I can retain that real nice shine. With this, I put all clad, I put all kinds of uh, products that require a gloss black base. Look at how good that is, and it's going to dry just like this. So we can put over a spoon, keep the spoon nice and shiny. I like to put on a base coat like this, you know, cloudy, rough, and then come in and get the shiny wet look at the end here there it is all right let's do it again I say back about three four inches for the first coat kind of like building its own primer so to speak I dry it off quick then I'm gonna come in quick the heavy coat and there it is all right let's do it again over one of my silver ones see it you hit it lightly dry it quick only about 10 seconds I'm just hitting the air all right then you're gonna come in with the heavy coat Ready? Let that dry. You're ready for your all clad or whatever you want to put over it. Any kind of metal or uh, chrome. Look at that. 
So, fantastic stuff. And look how much you got. And plus, you thin it a little bit. You're getting way more than that. Um, all right, guys, let me clean this out. Let me get these dry. We'll, oh, I hit the button. Watch out, camera. All right, we're going hit, to uh, hit it over to the bench, and uh, we'll go over the results. All right, guys, here we go at the bench. We have the results, and they're good. Uh, let's start with the gray. Can you see how it's... Well, I wish I can explain it. It's as smooth as glass. I mean, it really doesn't have that rough uh, texture that... Um, a lot of primers have. Here it is over the one with all the rivets. Look at all the details. This was over black, right? Yep. Yeah. Let me get the lighting here. Yep. Yeah, look at that. Take it off the stick here. See that? If there's any imperfections, it's probably because I forgot to either blow it off or I like to clean my stuff with some alcohol before I go ahead and paint but um, this is the oldest one right yeah let's go ahead and sand this and uh, look at that it's even smoother once I sand it it's not going through to the black can wipe it off all there and I'm, I mean it's glass now, if you could feel this. It's it's as slick as glass, like ice. So, it's easily sandable, and this is just in the dehydrator for 20 minutes. See it? That's what came off. So this is durable stuff. It sticks really well um, to the plastic. Better than any uh, acrylic primer I've seen sticking to plastic. You know, fantastic. All right, here's the black. I put a marker on this, but I ended up not painting uh, something on the other side. But let's see how it masked itself. It masked itself nice. Look at that. And look at the detail. Look at that. It dried beautiful. A satin finish. If you guys need a flat black finish, say on one of the Gundam kits or anything, a chassis on a car, just spray this straight up. Don't buy flat black anything. Just use this. Look at it. Let's try, uh, hold on guys, I got tape here somewhere. Here it is. Let's try a masking tape. I think the black has dried a while. But, as you've seen by the uh, sanding test, it should pass the masking test, no problem. <laughs> it's not even on the tape, you usually get residue on the tape. So, beautiful, beautiful primer, guys. You want to look for something to paint your frames that can take a beating? I'll show you the uh, results of the polycaps in a second. Here's the weakest link in the lineup. I think this white is weak. Now, I sprayed it, granted, over black, which is tough. It would take a few coats anyway. It is smooth. It's as smooth as anything. And whatever goes over this will cling to it nicely. Um, let's try and sand it. Use one of my sand sponges for my cars. It's coming off. You see, it's durable. It just has a weird chalkiness to it. The, the others don't have. It looks good now. I mean, if you take away all these deep grooves, it probably it's probably fine. But look how strong that is. It, I mean, that is on there. I'm pushing this down, guys. All right. And look, it's still not down to the plastic. Yet all the details are showing through. Even the weakest one, which is the white, is still really good. All right, what do we got next? Copper. All right, let's take the tape off of here. And look at the copper, how nice. Now, what is the yellow one? Bronze? Let's see the color difference. Oh, yeah, it's completely different. All right. But look how nice that went on. As I said, this is a great base coat. If you're going to prime a car... Prime it with this, and then put your color over it. Your reds, even golds, blues, it'll look good over this. I'm going to be using this primer in the future when I'm doing some paint test, and you'll be able to see the results. This, I just want to show you the results of the primer. I 
again, I could probably sand this. Oops, sorry guys, I'm always hitting the camera. Yeah, it doesn't even come up just like the white. or well, the black, the gray, the opaques. Fantastic. Yeah, let's, let's sand this spoon. This is the copper. Oop, I'm getting all the paint on it from the, from the previous one. Yeah, it's coming off the spoon, but these spoons stink. See the difference in me sanding this? And nothing comes up. And these spoons, these new spoons are terrible. There's something happening with these uh, spoons. I don't know what it is. But uh, very disappointed in that. But as far as the plastic and steering of, the, of a kit, no problem. This is the green. We'll show that in a minute. And here is metal. Is that what this was? Metal. All right, let's show it over the wing. There we go. Look at that. Like I, my buddy said, he painted a kit and left it this color and it looked absolutely perfect. This is it over black and over a white spoon. No real difference there. Get this lighting up a little bit. Look at that. That's a great color. If it's durable like the others, yeah, I mean, it's just as durable. So this would be good, as I said, for your frames, I think. Well, I'll show you the durability on the uh, polycaps in a second. Let's flip this over for the next color. All right, what do we have here? This is the bronze. Bronze. Again, oh, let's pull apart the divider here. All right. There's the bronze, much darker, as I've shown, than the copper. Really nice. This is a good... I might prime a car with this and then put my color over it and see what I get. Look at that. Fantastic. I love it. All right. What is this? Red-brown. All right. There's the red-brown. Again, these are for military vehicles. All right. What do we have? Olive green. Olive green. Military, I guess, again. I have a friend who builds only tanks. This is the stuff he uses constantly on them. All right. Here's the red. Oh, hold on. Let me get the polycap. Here's the polycap. All right, here's the red. Well, I should say, what is this? Dull pink? Dull pink. It's for spraying red over it. And this is it on a polycap, right? Let's see how it bends. It's breaking up a little bit right here, but not anywhere else. A little bit, yeah, it's flaking off. So it doesn't really stick to the polycap. However, this was one of the last ones I sprayed, so this could stand a, a, a long rest. I would give it a long rest as it seems to be sticking to the flat pot really well. So, yeah. But it is coming off the, the thin, thinner areas. Let's see. Uh, let's take one of these off. There we go. So I think this would hold up uh, if it dries, particularly for a few days. And you put it between the kit. But I just think the rubbing alone is just going to, no matter what you put on them, will rub off. If you leave it in one position, like I do on my kits, I don't really pose them. You're probably not going to have a problem. But uh, it didn't like the polycap too much. Plastic steering loves it. All right. Let me get the blue. Hold on, guys. Here is the blue. Very nice. You spray one of my uh, my Freedom Blue over this, it probably look beautiful. Look at that. Again, we can sand. I'm almost positive. I can't get a good grip on this. Takes the edges off. But I personally wouldn't sand this. It's just too smooth to start with. 
but that's how you see uh, the imperfections when you sand it and all the highlights left behind is what uh, you're trying to sand down all right let me get the last one then we'll show you the shiny black here's the yellow oh yellow pale mustard there you go the lighting is rough here these LED lights a little rough with paint there's the yellow now let me uh, pause the camera and go grab those uh, shiny black give me one second all right guys cut back from the dehydrator boom look at the gloss black is that awesome I, I've sprayed everything over this all clads uh, all of them all the uh, metal colors I have the AK extremes the green uh, green stuff world chrome so I do like to thin it I put a few drops of thinner automatically with the gloss black the others if you have a large needle go ahead but the gloss black I actually switched airbrushes I did all of them with the uh, 0.7 here Badger 105 Patriot but the 105 Patriot with the blue is my 0.5 and that's what I used for the black a little finer obviously not that fine but compared to the 7 but that's what I used for the gloss black I figured all the other ones were matte. I just switched it up just for that without having to worry about cleaning it. And look at the results. So, you're looking for a gloss black base. This is just stuff right here. Now, um, wrapping this up, I want you guys to know that there's a sale currently on the Badger Patriot 105. Um, I think it's 88 bucks. It comes with all three needle sizes. It comes with the point 33 the point 5 and the point 7 the black the blue and the silver all three needle nozzle combos and the airbrush for 88 bucks uh, it can't be beat it cannot be beat I'll put a link below to where you can get it and uh, you can do all your projects for 88 bucks for that airbrush you get all and the and the the nozzles if I can do this quick on these when you worry about uh, changing your nozzles out it's the easiest thing in the world I mean I've shown it a million times that's the whole thing there's your needle nozzle combo and you slide your needle in from the back you don't have to disassemble it to put the needle in and that is uh, that's just that's the beauty of these that's it I just changed the needle and nozzle so uh, if it sounds complicated Oh man, to change them in and out to get different ones? Nope, it's easy. That's a bargain. I'll put the link below for you guys for that. And also, before I wrap this up, get these out of the way for you guys. Uh, this is a giveaway video. I'll be giving away uh, this SD, this Super Deformed Gundam. It's all in Japanese though. Kugoyu Buso, is that his name up here? Anyway, I had a, uh, this is like 27 bucks, but I got a, a bargain on a couple of them. Uh, I built one here for the desk, and uh, they just popped together. Oop, just lost his arm. They popped together. I haven't put any details in it. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a black wash on some of the parts. Let's put his arm back here. There we go. Oops. Hold on, guys. Tough to work behind a camera. Tough. The awkward setup that we got here. There he is. I'm trying to show his face. Look at that. This is how he comes, all painted. Look at the cape. I mean, that's the position that he's in when you get him. It comes with the display stand. So, uh, put it back. Yep, yeah, leave a comment below. Like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Got a lot more tests to go. And uh, by liking and uh, leaving a comment, I use the comment picker, and uh, I'll give this away to somebody. And I got another kit to give away. I got another airbrush we're going to be giving away. Um, busy times coming up I'm gonna be demoing a couple of new paints this week and uh, that's coming up in a couple of days but go ahead and, and uh, like I said like leave a comment so you can win this uh, cool figure here and uh, Eduardo uh, from my last video that I gave away uh, the uh, USA the type American Gundam he didn't write me back so if you're watching this video Eduardo um, I left a comment that uh, you were automatically picked um, through my picker but I haven't heard back from you, so please write back. I've written you twice and haven't heard back. I don't want to give it to someone else when I've, somebody else gets picked. It's already happened a couple times now. So uh, 
Please, Eduardo, if you're watching this, go back to the last video. You can see the comment I replied to you to uh, that you won. Send me an email and uh, we'll hook you up. Anyway, guys, that's it for the video. Have a great rest of your weekend. And um, we will see you in the next video.